Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be making a very simple apple and cranberry cider. So I'm making my cider using the turbo cider method. Check out the Facebook group Turbo Ciders for All. And the turbo cider method is basically using fruit juice from concentrate which doesn't contain any nasty additives. So these are perfect examples of fruit juice from concentrate and in my apple and cranberry cider I'm using apple juice and cranberry juice and that's it apart from a bit of sugar and some yeast. So the simplest cider brew that you'll ever make involves doing this. mix it up a bit and I'll do this now you don't need to add sugar to this recipe but because the cranberry juice is low in sugar I'm going to add some to just bump it up a little bit more sugar means higher alcohol percentage but it can also mean less flavor I'm using brewing sugar and it's really fine. I could dissolve it in water first, but I'm just going to put it into the funnel and let the apple juice dissolve it as it goes in. I'm using 300 grams of brewing sugar, incidentally. I'll add some apple juice on top and it will cut through it. It should all flow through. There you go. And then repeat. And one last time. I'm going to overfill my demi John on purpose because I'm going to take some out for the hydrometer tube to take the gravity. And I won't put that back in. So I'm just going to pour some into my hydrometer tube. Slightly overfilled, so cheers. Delicious as you would expect. And let's get the original gravity. It won't be huge. And the original gravity is 1.060-1060. So next in the easiest cider that you'll ever make, I'm going to add some yeast. I've got Lalvin Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast, which is quite tolerant to high percentages. I'm not expecting it to be a high percent, but hopefully something decent. And I'm going to add a generous teaspoon and then half a teaspoon for good luck. I sometimes make uh, a little yeast treatment first with some warm water and some nutrient, but I'm not even bothering today. I want to show you how simple it can be to make a cider. Finally, I'm just going to add a little bit more apple juice, mainly to wash the yeast out of the funnel. So look at the great time the yeast is having. It's been in there seconds. And we've already got this here, this is called a Krausen, and this is the foamy head that builds on top. Now, I'm going to put an airlock in, standard airlock. If the Krausen rises through the airlock and makes a mess, I'll use a blow-off pipe instead uh, until it's calmed itself down. So we'll just wait and see what happens. But that's pretty much it for now. So the cleaned airlock goes back in, and that's my damage on labelled. So now it's just a case of playing the waiting game. So I'll be back in a couple of weeks time when this is finished fermenting. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's apple and cranberry cider clearing day. So here it is. There's no sediment in the bottom, but there's this pretty ugly looking trub on top. Now you can see bubbles coming up, which would suggest there's something happening, but it really isn't that much. And at this point, I think I'm just going to say I've had enough now. It's been two weeks since I did this. It's time to clear it. So I'm going to pour it from this demijohn into this vessel here. I've got a mesh filter in the funnel to hopefully capture the ugly trub. 
So bung out and simply a case of pouring. And I'm going to pour about half of this in and then I'm going to add the first of two lots of wine findings. So I'm using Clear It Wine Findings from Young's. It's a two-step process, bottle A and bottle B. I'm going to add bottle A to begin with. So I'm just going to add the equivalent of about a teaspoon. And that just goes straight in through the filter. And then I carry on and pour the rest of this in. And the filter's actually doing a good job of holding the trub back. It will slow down the process though. So the filter's done a good job, as you can see. That's this one done, so that's findings A in there, and I'm going to come back to this in an hour and add findings B. Okay, an hour has passed, so I'm now going to pour back into the original demijohn. I'm not using a filter this time. There's a minute amount of trouble, it doesn't matter. So I'm now going to add findings B, again like a teaspoonful. So I've got my bung back in and I'm just going to give it a little rinse, get all the sticky off. Okay, that's it for now. I'll be back in a few days time and let's just see how this has cleared. And then I'll be bottling it, whether it's clear or whether it's cloudy. So see you then, folks. Good afternoon from the kitchen, folks. It's apple and cranberry cider bottling day. I'm hopeful today for five 750ml bottles plus a little bit more because that's a fairly full damage on and sediment is minimal, so that's good. So I've got my brewing sugar ready for carving. I've got my plastic bungs in hot water. I've got bottles draining in various places around the kitchen, hydrometer flask and hydrometer at the ready. So let's do it. So it's bung out and then siphoning tube in. I'm going to go right to the bottom of the demijohn. As you can see, I'm going to leave that for a couple of minutes to settle now because I've just disturbed a bit of the sediment. So while I'm waiting for that sediment in the bottom just to settle back down, I want to carb or prime my bottles for carbon. I've got carbonation sugar here. So in each of the 750ml bottles, I'm going to put two teaspoons just straight back through. and then I've got a couple of 330ml bottles I'm just going to put one teaspoon into. So I'll repeat until all the bottles are done. Right the sugar's in the bottles so now the fun bit. I'm going to fill the hydrometer tube first and that will take the sedimenty bits from the bottom of the demijohn with it. Smells good. And there we go, the bubbles in the siphoning tube indicate that that's over. So I've got five 750 mils, a full 330 and nearly a full 330. So what I'll do is I'll transfer what's in the hydrometer flask into that when I've taken the gravity. So I shall take the gravity now. So I've just popped my hydrometer in and this is a really healthy final gravity of exactly one point zero 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 so this is going to be a nice strong brew 
So I'm just going to work out the alcohol by volume by taking the original gravity of 1.060 and deducting the final gravity of 1.000, which equals 0 0.06. And then I'm going to multiply this figure by 131.25. And this gives me a final alcohol by volume of, drumroll please, 7.875%. So I'm just going to say 7.9% because after, after secondary fermentation and carbon, that's what it'll be. That's a really nice strength. It's not rocket fuel, but it's a good strength and I'm happy with that. As I mentioned earlier, I've got the plastic bums in hot water. This is to soften them so they're easier to get into the bottles. Let's see if that theory works. One. Two. Number four. Still hurts a bit. Last but not least, of the 750s. Number five. I'm just going to give each of the bottles a little rinse to get any residue off because I've got to label them next. I need to put the cages on and that's just to prevent any uh, unfortunate missile accidents. So I'm just going to pop these on now and then I know it's safely done. All recycled cages by the way as are the bottles. So that's my 750ml bottles bunged and caged. Now I need to cap my 330s. Okay, so I'm just capping with a normal handheld uh, crown capper, or as I call it, the Predator. There's a bit of a knack to doing this, but I think I'm slowly getting there. It's easier to do it when you've got your bottle in the sink, that's for sure. Well, that was more of a mission than I hoped it would be, but I've got there in the end. I had to give up on the gold caps and go with the black ones, which seem to stick a lot better. So all that remains now is for me to print the labels. Okay, it's labelling time. So I simply take off my labels, place them over the bottle, try and get them nice and neat and even. So there we are, all nicely labelled. And now they need to go upstairs to my conditioning shelves. Okay, so there are my bottles on my conditioning shelves with everything else that I've currently got conditioning. And these are temperature controlled shelves. The temperature on the top shelf is currently 21 and the temperature on the bottom shelf is currently 20.7. And I know that because I have a thermometer there. And when the temperature drops below 19.5, it turns on this heater behind the shelves. And when it goes above 20.5, it turns it off and that keeps these shelves at a constant temperature which is just warm enough for the bottles to condition. So I'm going to give them two weeks on here so I'll be back in two weeks time for the opening and tasting. See you then folks. Well good evening from the messy kitchen folks. I'm sure home brewers everywhere can empathise with me as I've got Demi Johns and bottles sterilising all for tomorrow's action. But tonight, it's all about the apple and cranberry cider tasting. So here goes. Just get the cage off. So what I'm looking for is a bit of life in it. I'd like a little bit of sparkle. I'd like a good smell. I'd like a good clarity so it looks nice in the glass. But above all, I want a good taste. If I can get most of those things, I'll be happy, in all honesty. Let's see if we get a little bit of a pop. Definite bit of a pop, bit of vapour. Okay, so far so good. Oh, look at that, that's absolutely beautiful. I love it when it does that. So, that is a very, very lovely rosé colour. It's got a fantastic sparkle. That's not just effervescence, that's a proper sparkle. 
wonderful. It smells wonderful. The cranberry really comes through actually. Wow. That is a winner. Apple and cranberry. That really goes well together. It's a little bit sweeter than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be dry. I'd probably put it at being somewhere between a medium and a medium dry. You get the cideriness, you get the apples, definitely get that roundness. And then you get the sharpness of the cranberry. Oh, this is absolutely lovely. I will make this again 100% for sure. Anyway, cheers folks. Happy brewing. Happy weekend or whatever day you're watching this. And I'll catch you on the next brew. See you then. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.